so I decided to open up the keyboard and take a look at it. Um, has some nice shielding inside. It has a bunch of uh, foils and stuff, and seems to be well constructed. Um, I, I did take it all the way apart, then I decided that the keys were probably fine. Um, the reason that I thought the um, enter, the, not the enter, the return key was stuck, is because it's two keys next to each other. And if you hit one side, it'll bind. If you hit the other side, it'll bind. You have to hit the center, the exact center of the return key in order for it to function correctly. And I think it's just that the keys that just hadn't, hadn't been pressed for a long time and they just kind of were stuck in place. So I went ahead and just pushed all the keys and put it all back together and <laughs> hope, uh, hope it'll be okay. Uh, I, I don't see anything wrong with it. So here it is, uh, taken out of the case. Uh, so they have the CRT here and the board sits on top. Um, if you lift it up, there's really nothing on the other side. So it's only a one board computer. Now, the strange thing about this is here's the power supply over here and there's a connector here that's not connected, so that's kind of disturbing. And up here, there's a connector here that's not, <laughs> that's not connected. That's kind of disturbing. But I think it's wired at the factory to have the upgrade done. So if somebody buys the upgrade, then the service people can just slap it in and charge a bunch of money and they don't have to do any work. So I think that's what was done. Let's go ahead and take these screws out here so we can see what's going on. And please don't comment, hey, you're not wearing a wrist strap, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's California to begin with. It's rainy to begin with. <laughs> and I've done this all my life and I've never zapped anything. And I've asked four of my friends who are really good electrical engineers, have they ever zapped anything? And everybody says no. Okay, there we go. Can you see that? So, wow. Looks all original. Uh, 1982 for the ROM. And the date codes on things are 82, 82. Um, hmm. All the RAM is soldered down. That's interesting. This is the uh, video output here. And like I said, all of this things tacked in. I've seen, oh, that's interesting. What's that? <laughs> oh dear, what is that? That looks like a ground. Yeah, must be some kind of heavy duty ground to go to this add-on card. I think the add-on card was for double density, if I remember right. Serial number 2505. Pretty low, I think. Rev E. Interesting. So I think what we want to do though is we want to troubleshoot the power supply. And the reset button didn't seem to work, which is kind of strange, but I'm thinking maybe just power supply was drooping and it just wasn't wanting to reset. Um, Okay, if you're a good hobbyist, <laughs> always take a picture. Before you start taking things off, take a picture. Just as, just as backup as to what something might go wrong. I'll take this out. Take this off.
This is for the disk drives. This is for the video and it should be loose. Yeah, there we go, it's loose. It's got a strange processor. It's got an 87, a D780C. It's an NEC clone of the Z80, I guess. Um, or is this at the 8877? Maybe that's the microprocessor. That's the ROM. This must be the processor here. And then this here is probably the uh, probably the font generator. Probably the font generator. Okay, so I'm going to put this away someplace safe. should clean up my desk before I go on to a new project, but it's too exciting. So this is just power, grounds, and we have the power supply over here. Well, we go ahead and take that why don't we go ahead and take that out? See, this doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> and these look like they are pin compatible. They look like they can go in either order. threaded that one. Well, it's cross-threaded at the factory. That would be interesting. I need some needle loads. There we Your wires on here, interestingly. Oh, look at that. Oh dear, don't want to mess with that. I know the capacitors look okay on it. These capacitors look bulged. 
Well, they don't look good. They have, this one's okay, but these are bulged. Uh, definitely want to replace those. And while we're at it, we'll replace these reefs as well. 0.01s and a 0.1. These are Y's and this is an X. Although these, these are all X's. They, they're using X's in all three spots, but these are the Y's and that's the X. Hmm. And what do we have going on here? How come we can't take this apart? These go there. And then these go. This says 115 and this says 230. Interesting. So don't want to mix those up. Interesting. <laughs> and there's a weird, strange thing here that says 115 and it's not going anywhere. A little bit scary, isn't it? And this doesn't go anywhere. That's a little bit scary. Although that looks like ground. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm freaked out. <laughs> I don't like it when I have things just floating around that I don't know where they went and why they're not going anywhere. What are these capacitors? 250 volt, 250 volts, 100 microfarads. So these have seen better days. Yeah. If you feel the tops of them, they're flat, nice and flat, and these have just a little crown to them, which means they're probably going bad. This is all uh, low voltage stuff over here. 1000 microfarads at 25 volts and these are 220 microfarad, 2200 microfarad at 16 volts. So all low voltage stuff here. This board outputs minus 12, plus 12 and plus five. So I suppose we could just power it up and see if it's actually outputting voltages or what it's looking like. Or maybe replace these bulging capacitors while we're here already.